Hi, I'm Indrapreet Singh and this is a video detailing the design and construction of the Project IoT Sensor Jacket. Element 14 and Texas Instruments challenged us in the Smart and Sound Design Challenge to create a wearable for personal safety and it has two constraints. Number one, it had to employ the MSP432 microcontroller from Texas Instruments and second, it had to be awesome. The IoT sensor jacket is divided into three modules. The first module is the sensors and communications core which uses the MSP432 launch pad the sensors booster pack and the CC2650 Bluetooth module booster pack. Uh, there is also a Node.js application for connectivity and IoT. The, the second part is the energy harvesting display which has the DIY MSP430 Econopad, the Sharp96 LCD booster pack and the 2660 uh, BQ25 uh, BQ25570 EVM with a 0.1 microfarad, sorry, 0.1 farad uh, super cap and a solar panel. The last part is the QI charging smart power pack, which is, which has the Element 14 and Texas Instruments fuel tank booster pack combined with the Worth Electronics and Texas Instruments wireless charging. In a series of four segments, I will be doing a module by module design and implementation of the project. And in the fourth segment, I will be doing a assembly and a demonstration video of the IoT jacket in action. So let's get started. All right, the first module of my uh, design is the sensors and communications core, which features the MSP432 launch pad. The launch pad talks to two booster packs. The first is uh, the sensors booster pack via the I2C, and the second is the uh, CC2650 um, booster pack via the UR channel. Uh, in addition to this, I've exposed the header as well as another UR channel, and I'm going to talk about this later. Uh, the CC2650 is allows it to talk to either an Android, iOS, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, Black Edison, or in my case, I'm using a MacBook Air and a Node.js application to demonstrate the facilities. Uh, the Node.js application features a web-based uh, GUI or a web page which allows me to send information and receive it, and we'll take a look at it in a minute. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the hardware. The booster pack for the sensor booster pack uh, has been enclosed in a custom enclosure which can be strapped onto a jacket uh, via two ribbons and the cable can go f uh, under the uh, clothing itself uh, the jacket you know and the uh, there's a connector for uh, for disassembly and uh, this goes directly into the uh, launch pad uh, enclosure itself. So the launch pad enclosure as you can see uh, features the launch pad on top and the CC2650 booster pack under there. The I2C connections have been soldered directly to the launch pad. Not a lot of destructive stuff doing, going on here but uh, I did have to clip the headers on the uh, sensors booster pack though to make the enclosure uh, well close. <laughs> and it's basically a press fit enclosure. Let's see if I can do it. Come on. And there we go. Uh, so this will be strapped on to the base unit uh, or the jacket itself. Uh, this, uh, you, the enclosure for the MSP430 launch pad or the core module is again a press fit uh, case. Uh, the SDL files for all of these are going to be av available for download on uh, the GitHub page. As you can see, I've broken out the headers. Uh, the reason uh, I'm going to discuss uh, in a while, because that's going to be the power uh, fuel tank booster pack going to be connecting to this. And uh, that's a very elegant solution. I'm very proud of that as well. And you can see that there's a UART cable coming out. Uh, and this is going to talk to the display. And we're going to talk about that in uh, a minute. But uh, right now, uh, let's take a look at the software, the firmware part of the MSP432. All right, so let's take an ultra quick look at the code that runs on the MSP432 launch pad. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken the project zero from the Bluetooth uh, plugin from the resource explorer and I've made a couple of tweaks to it. The obvious tweak is I've added a couple of functions including a setup for the I2C, a optical sensor uh, reading task, a temperature sensor reading task, a battery reading task, a, an extra UART task. Um, and there are a couple of other tweaks as well. Let's just like take a look at the tasks first. So you can see uh, it just uh, uh, opens up the I2C bus. I don't know if this is necessary or not, but I, I, I required it to get uh, the temperature sensor and the uh, optical sensor to kind of work. Uh, in addition to that, what I have is there you can see my battery uh, task. Uh, I've commented out the optical task as, uh, for the time being. Uh, you can see uh, it, uh, all I have to do is just read the I2C uh, uh, 
registers for the percentage of battery and then I send it to using this display printf uh, using B and a, a three uh, character padding in a decimal uh, in unsigned integers to my um, uh, energy harvesting display. So what I'm doing is I'm basically using the back channel UART on the launch pad and I've connected that as a secondary you are to my energy harvesting display and that's how I'm communicating with it. So I'm sending the battery parameters to that and I'm sending it to a notification service as well. Uh, similar stuff happens for the UART and the temperature uh, sensor. This is more or less a copy paste from the sensors booster pack. So that uh, I've, what I've done is I've added uh, a uh, temperature sensor service and uh, that basically adds to, uh, it just sends that data. The second thing uh, I've changed, now this is uh, something that a lot of people would be actually interested in uh, in addition to uh, I, I got I got to this link a, li a little late uh, so I'd really recommend you going into this so this is Bluetooth things Bluetooth developer studio this allows you to kind of generate the header files for the uh, for creating new profiles removing stuff and adding your own characteristics and stuff like that uh, unfortunately it doesn't really work for the newer um, um, our TIR toss and the newer Bluetooth uh, plugin, uh, but it is definitely useful if you uh, if you are getting uh, problems creating your own. I got to this link a little late. Bluetooth Studio works for has plugins to generate code for text. So this needs to be updated, I guess. And I think the guys over at TIR are really uh, at it, so it it should get updated pretty soon. Um, so what what does it mean when I have to create custom tasks and custom characteristics and stuff like that? So here you can see uh, when the uh, system advertises, it normally advertises a 128-bit uh, service. So initially Project Zero really doesn't advertise any service. So this creates a problem for my uh, Node.js application. So what I had to do was I wanted to advertise it. Uh, in my Project Zero, you should be able to see ad yeah, there we go. So this is the advertisement data. You can see I've removed the manufacturing information. Sorry, TI. Uh, and instead, I've added uh, some uh, UUIDs for the LED service and the IR temperature sensor service. I, I've kept the battery service hidden for the time being. Uh, so what does this mean? Uh, this means it'll send this uh, as a function to um, as as an advertisement data. Now, if uh, there's a limited amount of information that you can send, because I think it's user information is up to about 28 bytes, so you really can't afford 128-bit uh, UUID. So the second thing I had to do was shrink uh, the LED services and uh, UUIDs. So instead of sending it 128-bit, now it's sending only one. 16 bits of data so that's pretty neat uh, if you are trying to send a lot of information over that advertisement small advertisement packet um, having done that now I am advertising two more packets and I've done the same for the uh, IR. the reason why I'm keeping this LED service off so that I can ping it uh, frequently and check whether my code is working or not so that's about the, the gist of it I've added uh, fuel tank dot H so this is all the registers for the BQ two seven five one zero uh, that's the fuel tank chip on the fuel tank uh, booster pack. This is, I've got the older version. If somebody wants to send me the newer version, ah, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, but uh, for the time being, this works. Uh, let's take a look at the code in action uh, with a cell phone first and a, uh, well, the kit itself. So let's take an ultra quick look at only the core and sensors modules in action. Uh, let me just switch on the launch pad as soon as I do that. There we go. It says CC2650 jacket tag. Uh, two, uh, two services being advertised. Click on one of the, uh, on the uh, device and we have uh there we go so these are the longish uuids uh, these are not being advertised but the two services that being advertised are 1110 and the last one is 1140 so these are the two shrunk down service names that i um hard coded uh, and you know recoded for that so let's just click on this so write a new value does it work one two one two one two Six, that's 24 bits and bam so the LED switches off let's turn on a, the blue LEDs so red green and uh, blue or go done there we go so we have a blue LED uh, again switching it off so uh, 
basically the um, uh, communication works. So let's take a quick look at the uh, temperature sensor data. So IR temperature data. Uh, there's no nothing happening, so I have to be notified of these values. All right. So once notifications are enabled, uh, there is the task running in the background. It has a 10 second delay, so it'll only update after 10 seconds. And also, you can see uh, that oh, there's only one byte of useful information. So that one F is the only useful information. If I put my hand over it. Uh, again, I have to wait for 10 seconds. There we go. So you can see that it detects uh, an, uh, temperature without actually being in contact. So this is useful for detecting some hot, warm, uh, extraordinarily hot and warm objects right in front of the wearer of the jacket. Uh, so this information can be parsed into any kind of application and then sent over IoT to generate alerts and stuff like that. Uh, there we go. It's dropping after 10 seconds and there we go so yeah uh, since the notifications are enabled uh, this allows the application to kind of sit push to the it push data to the server so you can see uh, this kind of uh, behavior can be very useful in uh, well these kind of applications all right, so this is the second part or the second module of my design uh, and this is the energy harvesting uh, display. Uh, it consists of, it's been divided into two modules. It's, uh, the first module is the, it contains the Sharp 96 uh, display. Uh, which has been mounted on a uh, DIY uh, MSP430 Econopad. So this enclosure uh, houses the uh, um, circuit for the MSP430. So if I disassemble it like this, so you can see there's a uh, the con uh, the MSP430 G series microcontroller, and uh, on top of it uh, is the Sharp. 96 booster pack and it kind of comes in a very good window um, I'm gonna I, I can't demonstrate this unfortunately because there's been there's been a problem with the connector uh, here's a clip of uh, what went wrong all right uh, so I've hit a bit of a snag I knew that this display was uh, having some problems when I initially got it but uh, as you can see the connector is kind of uh, flunky right now if I uh, power it on it, uh, it doesn't display anything uh, I'm guessing this uh, little ribbon cable is kind of damn damaged or something uh, the enclosure was I guess too tight I've all right, so uh, bef been un even though I can't demonstrate it uh, live, I did a video on uh, the uh, power measurement of the con um, uh, with the solar panel. So I did test the module individually, and it did work. And so here's a video of uh, the module under test and uh, the current consumption of the microcontroller and this thing and this thing working with the solar panel. So when I when I power it on now. So you can see the capacitor is charging, so it sucks up a lot of current. But, but, uh, I don't know if you can see this, right? But, yep, uh, the display is now on. Cool. So that means, note to self, uh, when you're d designing these microcontroller circuits, do add a space for those reset caps. So. <laughs> In this case that uh, it took me a bit uh, to kind of debug but yeah so adding that reset cap adds to that and even though there's going to be a very small drop across all of those cables uh, the thing kind of works and as you can see the MSP430 plus the sharp display just uh, uh, sucks up about 566 microamps thanks to the Bremen all right, so let's take a look at the, the system behind it. So we have an MSP430 Econopad talking to a Sharp 96 uh, module uh, LCD booster pack. Uh, then we have the BQ25570 EVM. Now, this little enclosure is, again, something I'm really happy with uh, because instead of using a lithium-ion battery, you know, typically uh, the VBAT is supposed to be connected to something like a lithium-ion battery or something. Uh, I experimented with using a 0.1 farad, uh, that's right, 0.1 farad super cap, and it kind of, it, it, as you can see in the clip 
uh, it kind of worked out for me and uh, the solar uh, and uh, the output of this thing is uh, 1.8 vol volts by uh, config by default you can change that using uh, r9 and r10 these are these two resistors down here but i didn't need to because the msp430 uh, can run anything between 1.8 volts and 3.6 volts so yay and um, the the so the super cap can really store a lot of charge so this thing kind of ran for a long t longer time than I anticipated uh, so I decided to use uh, an, an, an additional enclosure and this is supposed to go um, at the back um, just at the back of the neck behind the collar under the collar and uh, this is supposed to be on the uh, on, as a flap instead of the pocket uh, so let's take a look at the software part the code behind uh, the code that runs on the MSP 430 uh, now the MSP 432 is relatively simple. So what I've done is I uh, added a couple of text messages. For example, um, I could send status OK, low battery as an enumerated. Uh, I could use an enumerated data type, or uh, uh, I've just used a uh, array of character strings and it stores it on the MSP 432. So these are predefined messages that you just have to send three, four characters to get it. So initially, as you can see in the previous uh, clip, uh, it displays safe and sound companion zero version number 0 0.01 uh, then I have uh, this battery string temperature string pressure string humidity stuff all of this stuff being displayed of course I wasn't sending all that but uh, the way I do it is I have an infinite for loop I'm not sleeping I'm not using the MSP 430 in sleep mode because it's taking about 300 microamps uh, even though it's running at 1.8 volts full f swing so ugh, I don't need to really make it sleep uh, what I have is the f if the first character is B that means that it then uh, the rest of the stuff is going to be battery if uh, uh, the first character is an S and uh, then it's going to be a, a string enumeration and then it's going to convert that and so on and so forth so this so the point here is if then it calls the refresh display uh how i'm doing this this is again a uh, i've done a tutorial on this on the element 14 uh, series of, of blogs for this particular challenge uh, where i've mentioned how to use serial protocols and uh, this is basically a uh, tlv this tag value length of course i'm not using value i'm just using a uh, tag and then uh, sorry I'm not using the length variable just tag and value so M for you know M H so it's just single characters if you take a look at let me see where I put ah there's the refresh so it just clears the sharp display shows the title shows the alert box and I've divided it into sub uh, functions and they kind of worked pretty uh, nicely it's a shame that I couldn't show you uh, the thing in action but yeah that's uh, it's pretty much simple again the code is available on github for download uh, for uh, all of those watching who want to experiment with it the last part of my design the third module is the qi charging power pack uh, now the qi charging power pack utilizes the fuel tank booster pack from element 14 bye bye and uh, and also the worst electronics and texas instruments wireless charging kit so ti components to all of these all of this stuff is more or less ti uh i disassembled the kit and i mm, in, i enclosed it in uh, a, a diy enclosure and you can see the headers are protruding from the back so this is designed to kind of uh, fit with the core module and uh, it kind of mates with it and yep powers on uh, I didn't have <laughs> of course this is the older version of the fuel tank and it doesn't have a uh, power switch and I didn't include one uh, but uh, you can and once you put this on the uh, charger uh, it will start charging as well uh, on the inside uh, we have there we go so if from the inside you can see we have the fuel tank uh, booster pack under there uh, I'm using uh, two pieces of PCB to kind of press fit it down and uh, there's the lithium ion battery um, the coil sits on uh, on these two uh, rails that I uh, support rails that I designed in the reading enclosure so basically no problems with the shorting cir short circuiting or stuff like that and the coil is uh, taped under there so it's right under the circle so you know where to put uh, your pack during charging and uh, there we go and voila it's a uh, press fit enclosure 
ti.com and uh, the qi power pack using ti and worth electronics and element 14 so exceptionally uh, happy with uh, this as well i intend to add a usb port here in a future version um, so that i can charge say a cell phone and i also intend to put a switch uh, somewhere around here in uh, the, well in a next version but right now um, you can charge it via qi or you can charge it via the usb port right all right so I got uh, the since I got the BLE modules and uh, communicating with uh, my CC2650 I decided to add one more module to the design <laughs> that's design uh, that's a last minute entry and this is a, the CC2640T uh, BLE light all right let's do the correction here it's the cc2640 uh what it does basically is it is a uh, it's an rgb and w led uh four leds packaged with the chip and the uh chip on the uh, on uh, uh pcb trace antenna and what i've done is i've created a small enclosure for this as you can see again a press fit design and a pretty good one actually um, so the idea is to uh, sew this thing on the front of the person and have uh, this thing in there and close this enclosure there press fit works comfortably and uh, have this uh, control for example if I read that there's no uh, ambient uh, light uh, the guys uh, who's wearing this uh, jacket is suddenly in the dark then turn on the white light and if something goes wrong uh, uh, something like uh, say temperature or high temperatures being detected then it should emit a red uh, light so that's uh, a, a last minute addendum uh, to my design uh, so next uh, there's nothing to show for this so next uh, let's take a look at the demonstration of the final uh, jacket as uh, my better half has uh, compiled everything that I've thrown at her basically so let's take a look at that the last part of my project is the software which hold which kind of gives the connectivity and iotivity to it unfortunately i'm not a software programmer so my experience with node.js is non-existent uh what i've done is i've put together bits and pieces i've gotten things to work i'm not very uh, happy with it but I have gotten them to run so here's a node.js program that does the scanning so if I turn on the Bluetooth light there we go it can see the BLE light uh, next I can run a separate program for node uh, LED only so what this does is it tries to find these uh, and connect to these LED lights then switches on the brightness to a bit and then a bit uh, what i wanted to do was port it to something like this cordova app uh, so yeah i was able to get a cordova app but you can see not very successfully there are problems with that as well so i would have liked this whole this application to be controlled via the cell phone via a cordova app and i'm gonna work on that no doubt about that all right so i've got a b bluetooth scanning code available i've got this is the code for my jacket so it does the scanning i've distributed it into two kind of functions and uh yeah the code is a uh sorry this is the jacket connect so this is the uuid for my uh, jacket i have the set characteristic functions which allows me to send rgb data to the onboard led and it, it kind of works uh I'm not going to demonstrate it because I'm not very happy with it, but yes, it works. So the LED program, this is only for the LED switching on and off. This is for the notifications, getting temperature data and battery data and stuff like that. Uh, this is the scanner, and I wanted to do an HTTP uh, web UI, but unfortunately, uh, I am I'm, I'm out of time, particularly because I thought I would do it in the end, but unfortunately, I'm out of time. I But yeah, uh, I did get the tits and bits uh, working. Hi, so this is the final product. This is the IoT companion jacket that courtesy of Element 14 and Texas Instruments. Uh, so here you can see the uh, front end components. So this is the energy harvesting display uh, featuring the Sharp 96 uh, LCD booster pack. This is the sensors booster pack with Bosch and uh, all those Texas Instruments uh, sensors. The cabling is gone under this and we're going to show that uh, in a minute. This is the Bluetooth LED light and at the back you can see there 
there is a solar harvesting panel with the BQ25570 EVM module. Uh, taking a quick look at the uh, Bluetooth light itself, so it's controlled via BLE, and I can turn the light on and turn the light off uh, via the Bluetooth application. Let's take a closer look at the inside of the jacket. Here you can see uh, the cables for the I2C and power for the sensors uh, booster pack going in there. And this is the UR cable going from the energy harvesting display all the way to the MSP432, uh, which is in the pocket, but its headers are exposed so that I can attach the uh, QI power pack. The wires for the energy harvesting uh, solar panel go right from here, from under the collar and to the back. We're going to take a look at that. In order to power this jacket, we need a power source, and in that case, what I have is a QI power uh, battery pack. As you can see, it's the yellow indicator uh, means that it's charging. As soon as I lift it, that means it's stopped charging. It's being charged from the Texas Instruments BQ50021 uh, two EVM module, and uh, this is what is going to connect to these exposed headers on the jacket. And all I need to do is simply connect them, pair them up, press it down, and the charging is on. the charging pack is on. How do I know? Because now you can see uh, the CC two five two six five zero sensor tag jacket tag being shown in the Bluetooth Explorer. As soon as I disconnect the tag, it disappears. So that means uh, my system kind of works. All right, so we have the, this is the final version, uh, the operating thing. So if I put my uh, thumb over the temperature sensor, it should show a rise in temperature. There we go, 21 F. So you can see here, uh, there we go. So you can see it came from, yeah, there we go. It dropped again. If I put my thumb over the uh, sensor once more, so the same way it works for the uh, ambient light sensor and I've already demonstrated uh, the work of the uh, um, LED. So let's take a closer look at the entire construction. All right. So uh, this is the final product. Okay. So starting from the top left, so that's the sensors booster pack. All right. Uh, if I flip it over, there you can see the cabling cables for this is the cable for the UART. It's coming down here. There we go. This is for the I2C. You can see I damaged the cable, so I had to make do, and yet still working. And there's this is the cable going in for the energy harvesting system, and that goes to the back. Uh, this is the QI charging pack. So I, if I disconnect it, you can see a bit uh, of. Uh, well, stitching work done by my better half. Uh, so the headers are exposed like that. And uh, let's take it apart. Uh, you can see the uh, enclosure for the uh, 432 inside there. This, I'm using another fuel tank booster pack for the LED. And it can be put into the pocket. There's just two wires. So they, they can be concealed from and uh, there is the uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy harvesting module uh, at the back. Uh, if you take a closer look at this, uh, we did, a, my wife kind of uh, added a little bit of um, ribbon cuttings to this to make it uh, look much better. <laughs> so that's the finished uh, jacket inside out. Uh, and I hope you like this project. That's it. For the, un it's very unfortunate the display didn't work though, uh, in the final version, but I got it to work anyways. So yeah, so that's the final version. I'd like to thank Element 14 and Texas Instruments for the opportunity to participate in this design challenge. If you like this project, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them below in the box. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.